Alright, so what's going on guys? My name is Chopper and welcome back everybody to a brand new video. What I have for you today is the full Shadowed Throne Easter Egg Guide. So this is going to be every single step in depth and I'm going to show you how to do this the first time through. Now, there's a lot to do in this Easter Egg. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. It's a little bit easier than some other ones in terms of just actual difficulty, but you have a lot on your plate and you're going to see that later. So I highly recommend that you do this co-op with at least one other player. You can absolutely do it solo and this guide is also going to be set up to cater towards solo players as well but i highly advise you run this with a team as it will make it a lot lot smoother so that being said if you guys want to go join my discord server the link will be in the description and all of you are welcome to go there and find some teammates you know ask in the chat if there's anybody down to run the easter egg and i'm sure you can find somebody in there but this is going to be a very easy guide on how to complete this regardless of how many players you have so if this guide does end up helping you at all or you enjoy this then be sure you do leave a like it helps me out an absolute ton leave a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you do happen to be brand new and uh, if you have not done already and i'll have plenty more world war ii guides coming out very soon in the future and this is probably the biggest one for this map but i'll have plenty more world war ii content coming in through the dlc season okay so one thing you should know before we actually get started on this you have quite an agenda to fill when it comes to how many things you need to do in this map before you end up going to the boss fight so i'm going to go through all of these and not waste very much time at all so feel free to pause the video at any time or go back if you miss something and definitely pay attention but if you follow all these steps you should have no problem whatsoever so with all that finally being said let's go ahead and get started Alright, so the first thing you should do coming out of the spawn room is go up by this elevator side into this room with the dead girl on the bed. And if you find the dancer's painting, that should be the very first thing that you pick up. Make sure you have that, and then go ahead and open up the main area of the map. We're just going to refer to this as the plaza. So, a lot of you guys know how to do this, but uh, go up to the radio, and then just hold square on it so you get that little pop-up notification. You don't need to mess with it just yet, but just make sure you look on the top of the radio for a number and a letter code. So, it should say something like RX3 or something like that. That. two letters and a number so then go over to the church and then find this map right here with a red pin it's going to be on either one of these names where there's uh where there's like an actual chart right here so take the name that was on the map put it on the chart and then take your number from the radio so such as rx3 and then find your frequency that matched up to it it's a very very simple straightforward step and once you have that frequency down just go and either do it by yourself or tell your teammate what it is and then uh enter this into the radio and it's it's not really that finicky like like you just need to get somewhat close to your actual frequency and once you do that right you should get a green light pop-up over on that radio and then you'll it'll the game will let you know that you've contacted the Russian now you've done that go outside the museum and you should see a box right here that has a lock on it you can either shoot it or knife it to open and then you want to also set it off again to set off some flares by that point you should get another pop-up notification knowing that you've done that right as well and you're good to go pretty easy so far right so now by this point you should have a lot of the map open go into the theater and pick up this magnifying glass we're going to use for later and now you also want a wonder bus battery so one locations can be on that box if it's not over there go to the museum and it'll be on the bottom floor on this box these are basically like the wall weapon kind of cases that are all around the map and if it's not on either of those two locations go upstairs by the melee perk on this side and it should be right here on the same looking box and this case where the dead guy is and once you pick that up you're good to go with the wonder weapon well, actually, I, I lied about that. Kind of. Well, there's a Zeppelin coming in, and we need one more part for the Wonderbus battery, or just for the actual Wonderbus itself. It's really easy to get, so it's going to be making these things. We're going to call them Sizzler Zombies. There's these uh, kind of napalm zombies that run really fast, and uh, upon meleeing one, as soon as you kill one with melee damage, you're going to pick up the Geist Bolt, and that is the second part that you need for the Wonder Weapon. So take it back down to spawn where this gate is, put your battery to open up that gate, and then place both parts on the Wonder uh, on the Wonderbus itself. Itself. Now, don't forget to take the battery out of the gate because that's actually how you get in and out of this thing. But both parts need to go on the gun if you want to be able to pick this thing up. But once you have the Wonder Bus, you can simply shoot the gate to get yourself out, and then uh, it'll stay open from uh, your, for the rest of the game. And while you're down there, shoot this register as well to open up and reveal a picture with a frequency on the bottom. And this is going to be your frequency for the radio to contact the smuggler. We're going to talk about that in a second. But also, while you're at it, you might as well go and open up Pack a Punch, and it's going to be behind these two fuses that you just want to open up with grenades and then shock if you've seen my pack punch tutorial then you know exactly how to do this thing but there's two fuses that you shock really really easy and uh, it's probably one of the most straightforward pack punches we've ever had now once you have that frequency go back over to the radio and you guessed it enter that in and we're going to be contacting someone known as the smuggler which we're going to be doing i guess you could call a mini quest for we're going to give him a couple things and he's going to give us something in return at the very end and once you've done that right another green light should come up saying that you've contacted the smuggler 
So far I've been pretty easy and straightforward steps, but this is where it gets a little more involved, so pay attention here. This is uh, this is going to be the deciding factor, I think. So now you're looking for a set of scratched codes that are either going to be in either of these locations around the map. So one I just showed you in the elevators over there. The second one is going to be around in the museum and etched into the stone that's right above this headboard. And you can see that it's another radio frequency. And if you don't find it at either of those two locations, I'm going to show you another one in the theater that can be behind this dresser. Now there's actually maybe five five or six locations so far and if you cannot find uh, any of them at the locations that we showed in this video then make sure you go and check the description I will link you the thread that has all of them but a uh, huge shout out to my buddy Starburst for helping me with this step and finding all these different frequencies because this is an absolute pain and but once you're able to locate it then take that over to the radio you've guessed that you need to enter in that scratched in code that it gave you to the radio and what's going to do is give you a set of Morse code and we've done this before plenty in Easter eggs I'm going to show you how to exactly do the step in case you guys are not familiar with Morse. This radio is going to give you a total of four numbers, and each number in Morse is made up of five symbols, and those are either going to be a dot or a dash, and a dash is one of the longer beeps, and then the dot is just a short, like, blip, and then it's going to be separated by a short pause, knowing you that the next number is about to happen. So I'm going to play you guys the sound from the radio in our game, and then the solution that we got from it thereof, and uh, so that can help you guys further in getting your Morse code out of your radio. So take your time on the step, there's no time limit or anything like that, so just make sure that you use the chart on screen right now, and listen to it over and over again, and make sure that you have the exact numbers that you're getting, and when you hear that longer pause, you know that the number cycle is about to reset, so if you miss anything, you can go back and check it out, but use the, the, the thing on screen right now as a tool, and you should be just fine, and once you have your four numbers, go back over to the church, and then enter that into the map with the magnifying glass that we picked up earlier. In our game, our code was 1921, so we type in the X coordinate first, so that would be 19 for us, so we go 19 over, and then 21 down, and then when we end on that, you jump off of the map, and then this cabinet should open, revealing a golden bowl. Once you've picked that golden bowl up, bring it back over to the museum, head up the stairs, and you should see a table with a scale on it that is being weighed next to a brain, and just drop the golden bowl right on the other end of that scale. Don't worry about it just yet, we're going to use it later. Now, what you should do is power up the anchors, these motors that have landed in the map. There's going to be one here, just shoot them with your wonder weapon to power them. There's also going to be one right outside the church in the courtyard over here that you can power up, and then there's one over here by the pack punch machine. And, and as soon as they turn yellow, you know that they're good to go and they're powered up, and this one actually in particular you can power up with souls if you just want to like get kills here and not use your wonder weapon either way is fine but just make sure that they're all yellow and you might notice that there is one more outside of the map a fourth anchor that you cannot hit don't worry, don't worry about that one for now we are going to get to that a little bit later but for right now we have other work to do by the time you've already gotten the anchors powered up, you should have a sizzler spawn into the map somewhere. Now, what you want to do is take him by an armor machine and then melee him when he's right in front of you. He needs to be super close, kill him with the melee attack, and then his head should end up over in the actual head plate of the armor machine. And when you buy armor, you're going to pick up his head and, of course, your armor as well. But you need to make sure that it is absolutely a sizzler that you get. Now, you can do this with a pest. I believe it also works with a regular zombie, but those are not the correct weights and they will not work for the step if you try to put those on. So make sure you got a scissor head, bring it up to the museum, and put it on that golden bowl that we were using earlier, and now you have balanced the scale, and now you have a soul box to fill up. Soul box you're filling up is actually the bunny rabbit that's literally right next to the table that we just dropped the head on, and uh, you want to take, I don't know, 15 to 20 zombie souls, and by the time it's done, you'll know it's ready when the cabinet opens up, revealing an axe charged with Geistcraft energy, and this is probably the easiest melee weapon to get. You need all three to open the secret door. So this is the first one, which is the axe. Now you can also see that we have the knife done and i'm going to show you guys exactly how to get this one as well it's a little bit tricky a little bit tougher but i'll show you guys exactly how it's done First things first, take yourself back over to the museum and then find the projector and then remember the dancer's painting that we picked up earlier, drop that onto the projector as well as shoot down the other reel that is sitting on the shelf or this other balcony, pick it up out of the rubble and then drop all of that stuff onto the projector and then power it up using the beam on your wonder weapon. Once you've done that, it should project an image onto the front of the screen with a, uh, with a green light as well and what this green light is signifying is where the dull locations are going to be where you need to get killed. 
kills. There's going to be a couple locations around the map where are they're going to be soul boxes, but not traditional soul boxes where they just like get done and then you're done with that step. You need to kill and then count how many kills you get until you hear a completion noise. Make sure you count them one by one and you should get a noise signifying that you're done that sounds like this. Now I've went ahead and labeled the board for you in case you find yourself getting lost and you can't really orient yourself when it comes to reading this. I've labeled a few locations so you should be able to uh, just be able to judge where your dolls are based on this. They're actually very easy to find once you know what the map looks like and if you do this over and over again. So in total you should have four and you need to count how many souls it takes for all four to fill up and that should give you a sequence of four numbers. In our game our combination was 9864 and this is what you're going to enter into the safe. So if you don't know how to do dial safes, the way you reset the combination is by spinning it at least four times to the right to reset the number and then stopping it on your first number whenever you want to start the rotation now once you have your first number turn the dial to the left passing your second number twice and then stopping it on the third rotation now your next number turn the dial to the right passing the third number once and then stopping it on the number on the next time and then for the final one turn your dial to the right to the fourth to the fourth number and then stop and then it should open up when you back out and then it will reveal the safe and it, there should be a knife right in there. Take that knife, pick it up, and bring it all the way over to the mold where we just dropped the axe a little bit earlier. And that should be two out of your three melee weapons already done. And believe me, the last one is actually the easiest. So if you haven't already got the smuggler's bat by this point, this is the final one that you need. And trust me, this one is a cakewalk. So the smuggler that we contacted a little bit ago now is going to come back into play. Go over to this gas panel and then shoot it or melee it to open it up and he should start talking to you telling you that he's stuck but he needs a weapon and you're going to want to give him any sort of wall gun. I recommend the combat shotgun because that works 90% of the time. He's going to either want like a, a, an LMG or a shotgun or a pistol or something like that but he will ask for a different weapon if he doesn't have the right one or the right ammo type give him something else but I'm telling you probably start with the combat shotgun as you'll have the most success and also please do not put any melee weapons in here right now there is a glitch and you can completely screw up this step if you try to add one of those in so only give him wall weapons for now once you've done that, all you need to do now is pass three rounds, but in those three rounds, either do what you didn't do previously in this guide, so get the other melee weapons and do those challenges, or just get ready and set up for the boss fight, you know, get your perks, get your guns, whatever you gotta do, but just do something within those rounds because you're gonna be blowing through a lot of time and also a lot of zombies. But once you open up that next second gas panel that I just did right there, drop some jolts inside of it and you will end up paying the smuggler, and that is that next challenge done. He'll tell you to go to his apartment and knock three times when you're there. So you pretty much already know what this means. Go down into the Wonder Weapon room and knock on his door three times. Go downstairs into the Wonder Bus room and this wooden door, melee it three times to open up. Your boy is going to be right there waiting for you and take out that whistling and you'll see the smuggler, he is dead all the way in the back with a baseball bat, which is the one, the final one that you need. I don't know what happened to the strap that we gave him earlier, but he's just got a, 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 this nice golden bat that you can actually do a ranged Geistcraft attack with the L1 or L2. And then once you have that, drop it in and you have all three melee weapons congrats all the busy work is done if you made it this far you're doing really well hang in there because we're almost done and almost ready for the boss fight now all you want to do is go over to the melee weapons that are in the molds where the secret door is and get a certain amount of kills of each zombie type you need to do regular zombies first you need to do sizzler second and then you need to do pests very last and i think it's about 20 for each it could be 10 for sizzlers but they take a little bit longer as they have to spawn one at a time but uh you need to do regular zombies first sizzler second pest third also, I figured I should give you a quick heads up for this. There's an also very minor glitch when it comes to opening the door. If you're too close to it, as soon as you finish that last pest kill and the door opens up in your path, it's going to instantly kill you. So watch out when you do that. As soon as you finish that last pest, just step forward a little bit or go into the church and you'll be a-okay. But just make sure that that does not happen to you because you get absolutely screwed. But as soon as you're done with all of the pest kills, all of the sizzler kills, and the regular zombies, the door should open up right there. And uh, you have one more puzzle to go through, but don't worry, as there's a very, very very simple tool to get this one done. As soon as you get down here, you're going to notice some statues up against four different walls that are lining the room. So this is wall one that I'm looking at right now. Just remember this wall one with three statues, A, B, and C. This is wall two with statues A, B, C, and D. Some have three and some have four. This is wall three. And then of course, on the other side, this is going to be wall four. Now what you need to do, there is a link in the description that uh, Giovanni made that you guys should go and check out. It's going to be a solver for all of these different statues. You need to get them to face you 
you to spawn in a golden raven so shooting them a number of times will make them rotate and it's basically a puzzle to get them all to face the right direction so all you need to do is on that link in the description enter in what wall you're looking at and where your statues are facing so the direction and then you click uh like basically use this to solve and it's going to give you a solution this step is not hard at all especially with the solver and if you do it right you're looking at the correct wall and just enter into the correct things so what this should look like when you're doing it right and you're looking at the exact solution that you need is when you shoot these statues they will rotate like this and then spawn in a golden raven for you to pick up and you need to do this for all four of the walls when you've done that correctly and have all four ravens take them over to the statue in the middle of barbarossa and put them in in the exact order that we have in this gameplay so this is where i recommend that you pause the video a little bit and go through it slowly look at the exact positions of the ravens look at the exact position of where they are on the statue and the specific ones that need to go where so this is what the lineup should look like every single time this is not going to change the puzzle for the walls may change but the positions that the ravens should be sitting is going to be the exact same in every single game so i'm just going to try to give you guys a really clear look about which ravens go where because this step is a little finicky and you can accidentally drop the raven on the wrong spot but if that happens in that case just go ahead and fail the sequence drop the other ravens wherever lightning is going to strike resetting the stones and then uh, you can just try it again but once you have all those done pick up the sword of barbarossa and then put that blade inside of the mold here opening up the door once more but also while you're down there don't forget to fill up the fourth anchor that's going to be right on the ceiling that you should be able to hit from here on out so that by that point you should have all four anchors done and you are ready for the boss fight so this is where you need to get set up so when it comes to what I think you should run in the boss fight, we did a two-player run. Me and Star decided to both run Frontline, and there's a really good strategy you can use with that. If you're running a four-player game or a three-player game, just use Shell Shock, and you can just kind of rotate between you guys and make sure that you're calling out who's using what, and then you'll have a Shell Shock pretty much always. Really useful tactic. If you're playing solo, I would also run Frontline. This boss fight is not as hard as the Darkest Shore on solo, so that is definitely a good sign, but I would use Frontline in a one- to two-player game, and then Shell Shock from there on out. But when it comes to guns, I would use the SVT 40 is what I picked up and then I would also absolutely take the Wonder Bus with you so and if you also have a third weapon maybe a Lewis might be all right some kind of LMG will be good Jack in the boxes are honestly extremely useful as well so once you're set up you have pack a punch your your frontline your specialist everything like that your perks you're good to go take all of your wonder weapons and shoot the top of this battery on the cage that is now lowered in the middle of the plaza and then once your gun is out it should you should be in the zeppelin and in the boss fight arena now while you're in this I'm gonna give you a super easy tactic to getting the first uh setup of the boss fight done so the boss isn't actually spawned in yet we need to defeat dr stroud before we get into that now what i recommend you do is save it down to one zombie by the time you get in here it should only take you like a minute or two have one person hold a zombie if you're playing co-op if you're doing it solo just make sure that you save one yourself and then you can go ahead and then go up to these consoles and you need to bring this electric orb this essentially electrical power source that you need to open doors to reach dr stroud now there's going to be multiple consoles around that I'm just going to show you guys in this gameplay how it's done and what this signifies on the console the green wire is where the path can travel for that exact power source based on whatever console you're on so on this one right here is sort of like the main one where you have a lot of options you can go either up or down and then uh, you can open doors in front of you and your goal here is to bring the power source with the green wire all the way down to the end of the last node you just need it to power that up so you're going to be bringing this electric source into Dr. Straub's room itself to activate his zombies which is really interesting and it's kind of a is a really really cool step and it's super easy if you have one person hold the zombies all the way in the back and sort of train them up so you can do this with absolutely no traffic you can see around me there's not a zombie in sight and I have all the time in the world to get this done and I can just uh, you know I can take it easy doing this but when you bring the power source to the last nodes on either side this the power is going to hit Dr. Straub's room and the zombies that he has in that are going to turn on him and it gets interesting because our boy here uh, is going to end up getting mauled by all of these zombies and he's gone Dr. Straub is out of here he's not the boss he was never going to be the boss and he's dead now so these uh, these kind of security doors are going to line up you're not going to see him anymore and then now the big boy the actual I don't know how to say this name it's like the straggler or something I don't know but uh, the big boss is going to spawn in right here 
So to break this down into three simple sequences, he has his first power, which is just going to be charging at you. And you have a very small window of time to hit him. So what I recommend you do to make this easier on yourself, if you're running like a co-op game, have somebody hold all the zombies in the back, kind of like what Star is doing in my game. He's keeping the zombies so I can just one-on-one -on -one the boss. And so while you guys get a clear view of this, when he's glowing like that, right when he starts or finishes his charge animation, that's when you have a window of time to put some damage into him if you want to hit him with an SVT or your Wonder Weapon. Either of those are great, but uh, I would also recommend that you try to conserve ammo as much as possible as you only have an FG-42 wall buy and an MP-40 wall buy in this room. There is no armor station, so if you have uh, one of the specialist abilities that can give you and your team armor, that's always a good call as well. But this first sequence is not that hard at all. Just let him charge at you a little bit and then shoot him. And then when you've done that enough, he's going to power himself up and you should get a quote from your character saying that he's getting stronger or, or something along those lines. And when you're at the second sequence, this gets a little bit tougher. He's going to spawn in sizzlers. He's going to like stand still, shoot the rod, and then make the sizzlers charge at you. Usually like one to two or maybe even three at a time. And your window of opportunity right here is to shoot him while he's standing still to fire those rods. That's the, the basically the opportunity that you need to put damage into him when he's just chilling out and uh, he's not moving really that much at all. When he's charging, I don't think you can hit him anymore based on this sequence, but uh, when he's making sizzlers, that is your opportunity to go for it and make something happen. Now, I would argue that this is probably the hardest sequence as it does throw off the pacing a little bit. Even if you're having somebody hold a zombie, sometimes new ones spawn in here just to make the sizzlers and it gets a little weird. So just kind of be careful about that one. When you take care of the second sequence and he fi finally powers up for the third time, this honestly, I would say is the easiest sequence and he's all like, he's going to spawn in a smoke screen, just throw one down on himself so that you can't see him and he's going to charge at you like once the smoke is down. So it's a little bit tricky and he's also going to electrify the floor, which will do a little bit of damage to you if you're not up on these rafters so just a heads up all right on that just be a little bit careful but when he's spawning in the smoke screen and it just now comes out that is your chance to lay into him and then put some damage on so i recommend use the wonder weapon for sure right here as he is a little bit tougher to see and the wonder weapon will essentially auto target him so it's really really nice in that regard but uh this is the last sequence that you got to do as soon as he's dead you put enough damage into him right there you're going to see his death animation and you're not done just yet zombies will keep spawning in but now your job is to escape the zeppelin like you actually need to get out the way that you came in so if you find the front here jump in the pod and you're gone once all the players enter the cage the door is automatically going to shut you're safe and this is going to return you to the main map in the plaza and guys Congratulations, you have beaten the Shadowed Throne main easter egg. I will say, hand over my heart, that this is probably the toughest egg that we have in the game so far. You can get it done on a fairly early round, but there's so much busy work and a lot of complicated puzzles that only, I think this is going to be like, only the most hardcore players are going to even bother to do. So if you've done it, you deserve some credit and congratulate yourself. But once you've done that, you will be rewarded with the easter egg ending cutscene and as well as your trophy. Also, I would thought I'd mention that we end up getting a secret achievement me and star in this game because we did not go down at all even in the boss battle we d we took no downs whatsoever and I we got a secret challenge after that said defeat the boss uh with with caution was what the hint was so i figured those of you who are hunting the secret challenges for the new characters that's going to be some useful information so doing the boss not going down a little bit of a challenge but i'm sure you guys can do it and if you want some teammates to complete this easter egg as i said at the beginning of the video check the link in the description go join my discord server and ask people if they're down to to help you run this egg i'm sure you're gonna find a lot of teammates in there and uh go go there go make a friend have fun with this map and uh, you guys will definitely enjoy this one but thank you so much for watching this guide i really hope all of this helped and uh, i was able to make it as descriptive as possible i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did be sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe if you are brand new and i'll see you all up in the next in the next live stream or the next video thank you guys for watching and peace out